Do you spend hours teaching people the same process over and over? Well, you're wasting your time. So I'm gonna show you how to make a training video. And if you've never made a video before, don't worry, I'm gonna be showing you the entire process from start to finish. And why trust me to teach you? Well, my name is Alec and I've made over 400 video tutorials. So I've learned what and what not to do to teach people in a clear and comprehensive way with video. Now, just before getting started, here's everything we're going to cover in this video. And I do recommend watching the video all the way through, but if you do want to skip ahead to a specific part, Part, go for it. Now let's get started. First of all, why create training videos? So your company is growing, you're hiring more and more people, and you no longer have the time to teach every new joiner one-on-one. -on -one. The solution to this is to make a training video so you can free up hours of your time just by sharing your training video with every person that needs said training. And there's no need to be somewhere with a set time frame. Video is also great because they engage both visual and auditory learners, and this can lead to viewers being more engaged with the video training. If a trainee doesn't quite understand a specific part of the training, they can just re-watch it again. And one of the best parts is that there's no need to pay someone for in-person training when you can just click to watch the video. And unlike in-person training, you can revisit the training anytime you want. And this is also key for global remote teams with many different time zones that can't all be there simultaneously, such as Veed.io. And finally, your training video can be high quality because you can reshoot parts of the video to achieve flawless results. The beauty of video is that you can rework it until you're happy with it. So if you're trying to optimize part of your company's training documents, training videos are the smartest option. Now let's get started started. Here's how to create a training video. Step one, create a script. So to make your video as comprehensive as possible, you want to begin by writing a script because the top reason why viewers stop watching a video according to Tech Smith is because the viewer was not getting the information they expected. And you might be thinking a script is a bit much, isn't it? I agree. If you're already familiar with the topic at hand, you can get away with simply bullet pointing every step of the training process. And these talking points can then help you make sure that you don't forget anything when you're recording your video. For example, let's say you're hiring copywriters for your blog, you want to list every key step of that process. So we could have something just like this. That way you won't miss a single step and your training will flow in order. And you can even add sub bullet points to each talking point just to make sure you don't forget anything. Step two, create a storyboard. Again, a storyboard is most likely overkill for what you're looking to create. However, just to be sure, have a clear vision of what you want your video to look like. Is it gonna be a talking head video? Are you going to be filming in front of a whiteboard? Are you screen recording your laptop so we can see a tutorial of a specific software? For example, I plan this video to be a talking head video, as you can see. But later on, I show my screen because it's a much more effective way of teaching the viewer what they need to know. I'm gonna be teaching you how to edit a video, so obviously you want to be able to see what I'm doing at the same time. Planning what you want the video to look like alongside the script will give you the best video outcome. Step three, the gear you will need. So here's the very minimum of what you're going to need. A phone, a laptop, and a video editor. In this video, we're using Veed, so you can follow along step by step just by clicking on the link in the description down below. And if you're going to be making a lot of training videos, I would recommend investing into a few extra things. A tripod to make the framing for your video easier. A microphone because the audio quality of your video is very important. You want to make sure that we can hear you loud and clear. Lighting, because having good lighting can drastically improve the quality of your video. One front facing light, a general ambient light, and then a backlight to kind of separate me from the background. And then you could invest in a camera. This is only if you really have the budget and you really want to take your videos to the next level, because pretty much all smartphones can record amazing 4K, and even 4K isn't needed for training videos anyway. This video that you're watching right now was recorded in full HD. And then finally, if you want to, you can invest in a teleprompter if you're going to be recording with scripts. I'm currently using one for this video, and it allows me to look at my script while simultaneously simultaneously staring right into the camera, so looking at my viewers. Step four, recording your video. When recording your video, set up your camera not too far away from the subject in a well-lit area. Have your script and storyboard close by to guide you through the video, completing each step of the training one by one. If you're not comfortable with being in front of the camera, here's a few tips that I've learned over the years. Eye contact, make sure you look directly into the lens and just imagine you're talking to one specific person. You also want to try and share one idea at a time. Talk one sentence at a time in order. It makes your video guide very easy to follow and it also makes editing the video easier later on. If you're going to be going from step four to step six, then to step three, then to step one, your trainees are gonna stay trainees for longer than they should. And finally, keep a positive facial expression. You don't have to exaggerate with a smile, but do keep a cheerful yet relaxed look. You can't expect people to be eager to watch your video if you're not even eager to be there. So for example, hey everyone, Alec here. And in this video today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make training videos. Hey everyone, Alec here. Today, um, I'm gonna be showing you how to make training videos. 
You get the idea. Once you've recorded your video's main content, if necessary, you can then film all of your secondary clips, which is also known as B-roll. If you're making a training video about how to use a camera, you'll want to show the camera and not just talk about it. If you need to showcase your computer's screen, you can capture it with a screen recorder. Veed has a free screen recorder Chrome extension, which also has a bunch of useful tools, allowing you to play and pause the recording, add sticky notes, and choose to show yourself or show just the screen while teaching the topic at hand. Step five editing your training video. So here's what I think is the best part, the video editing, it's my favorite part anyway. Now, once we have all of our clips, we can put them together. And here's everything I'm gonna show you right now on the computer in just a second to take your raw footage and turn it into a finished training video. Uploading video, cropping video, trimming video, adding text, adding transitions, adding subtitles, translating subtitles, just in case you're hiring overseas, and then also how to export and render your finished video. And then finally, how to share your training with your employees. And if you watch the video all the until the end, I'm also going to be showing you how people can ask questions and leave feedback on your training video at specific timestamps for all future trainees to see. So that way they won't constantly ask the same question over and over again. Now let's get editing on the computer. Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I made a very simple training video that we're going to go through and edit together step by step. So once you're on vid.io and you've created your account, the first step is to just click on upload your video. And if you're not logged in, go ahead and log in. So I'm just going to click on upload video and then I have recorded my three clips and for now I'm just going to worry about the main content as we can see I've named the clip main and then we're going to worry about the b-roll later. So this tutorial is very very simple like I mentioned it's a tutorial about how to pour a glass of water. I know it sounds dumb but it's just for the purpose of demonstrating all the tools and features we can use in a very simple clear and comprehensive way like we spoke about previously. So I select my main content and click on open and now I've clicked on open as we can see it's uploaded in to the video editor. So now if I press play today I'm going to to show you how to pour a glass of water. As you can see, we have my main tutorial. So the very first thing we want to worry about is make sure we have the correct aspect ratio. So because this is a training video, I want it to be the 16 by nine aspect ratio, which we already have. However, if you're making a training video and let's say you want to share it on Instagram, we can go and change the size of the crop and make it a square one by one video. And then we can actually just click and drag it out to resize it to the square one by one aspect ratio. So now we could have a square training video. However, I'm just gonna go ahead and click back on settings and choose the original just like so. And we're gonna keep Keep it this way. This is a step you want to make sure you do before you start trimming. So now we're going to trim our video. So to trim our video, it's very simple. We're going to go through, play our video and edit out all of the parts of the video that we don't want. So I'm going to take out the beginning of the video, as you can see here, where I don't talk. So as we can see here, I don't talk and there's a couple of ways I can remove it. I can either click the split button and then delete the clip, but because it's at the beginning of my clip, I can actually just click and drag just like so and then it will snap to the playhead. Now everything before that has disappeared. However, my timeline now starts from zero and I have a blank space. So I need to make sure I drag the clip all the way to the beginning. Now a quick tip for when you're working with your training video and you're editing out all the parts you don't want, we often have to remove silence when we take breaks between takes because I shoot all my videos in one single take and then remove everything that I don't want afterwards. And to make this easier, we're just gonna go ahead and click on this little sound wave icon on the right. And now we can actually see the audio waveform of our clip in our timeline. So it makes it a little bit easier for us to see where and where we're not talking. And the second way we can remove video that we don't want is by placing the playhead where we want to make a cut, click the split button, find the second area. So let's see this entire section that I want to delete. I have my kids. So just before I begin talking right here with the water bottle, click split again. And now I have this clip in the middle that I don't actually want. And so I'm just gonna right click and actually delete this. Again, now I can see it's disappeared and I just have to click and drag the clip back to the beginning. And so this is gonna be the process that takes the longest. So I'm just gonna speed this part up right now. Okay, so I've nearly finished trimming, but I do want to mention that when you're trying to make more precise cuts with the audio, you can just click zoom right here to zoom in so you can be more precise with the cuts you make and it zooms in on the playhead. So now I can just click split again, right click delete. And there we go. And I can just click zoom out or just click fit to fit the entire clip to the timeline. So I'm just going to drag all my clips back to the beginning because I've removed everything that I do not want. The next step is to add text to our video. And this is very simple. So all I'm gonna to have to do is click on text in the left toolbar. And here we have actually a bunch of different preset text elements that we can actually add to our video. And I'm just gonna add a title for each step and then a title also for the beginning. So this tutorial is how to pour a glass of water. So I've added the title and the first thing I'm going to do 
is just type out the title just like so. And then here I can actually change a bunch of different styling options. I'm gonna do this right now so I won't have to do it again later because I'll be able to just copy this text element. I'm going to click on more options and I'm actually going to add a little bit of drop shadow to make it stand out or we could add, or we could add a background square so it sticks out a little bit more. And I might just do this and then adjust the line height, just like so. I think that looks pretty good, pretty neat. And then I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna change the font size. That's too big for me. Or maybe not if we drag it out right here. Perfect, I'm gonna leave that there. And then I want to place it at the moment that I say how to pour a glass of water. So we're gonna play through and listen back for it. Today I'm going to show you how to pour a glass of water. That's pretty much perfect. Now I can change the duration and the timing of the text just by clicking and dragging, very similar to how we were doing the video clips in the timeline. I can also click and drag it around and it also snaps to the playhead. So if I place it exactly where I want, I can snap it to the playhead. But if I wanna be really precise, in the top left in the text editor, I've also got these little timestamps that I can adjust and input the exact time code that I want my text to appear and disappear at. So now if we play it back, to show you how to pour a glass of water. Step one, get your glass. Perfect, so now for the steps, I also want to add some text, but I do wanna make it look a little bit different. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is just right click and copy it so I don't have to restyle it. And then I'm just going to hit paste again. And now as you can see, we've got the text that appears a second time right here. And this time I'm just gonna modify it. I'm just gonna call this step one, just like so. But I don't want my text to have this little background. So I'm gonna click on more options again. I'm actually gonna remove it. And what I might actually do is go into the elements tab and add a shape as the background. So I'm just gonna add this shape, click and drag it to make it the entire size of the canvas, make the color black, and I also don't want an outline, or we can just make the outline black as well, just like so. And then I'm actually gonna place it to the same length of my step text, and then just put it right underneath. So now, if I go to my step text and choose white, as you can see, we've got this nice, very simple title screen. So if I press play, water. Step one, just like so. I'm going to show you how to pour a glass of water. Step one, get your glass. So now I've got my glass. Perfect. So again, I'm just gonna right click, copy, and then I'm gonna just paste it here. I'm gonna do the same thing with the shape, copy, paste, place it underneath. I'm just gonna drag my timeline up a bit so I can see it. And let's see. The second step is. So again, when I say second step, I actually want my text to appear again. Except this time, obviously, we're going to change it to step two, just like this. So now let's play it back. My glass. The second step is to get a container of water. Okay, so here I'm talking about an action that I show in a B-roll clip. So what I can do is just quickly click this add video button right here. Click upload a file. And I'm just going to choose this clip right here. As you can see, it adds on to the end of our current clip, but I'm actually gonna drag and place it right here where we're talking about this specific section. So this is my sink, me pouring a glass of water. Again, I know this tutorial is very, very silly, but let's see what we can do. So I'm just gonna click and drag because I don't want the entire clip, obviously, trimming some of it out. And then I'm actually going to rotate this just like so. And click and drag it out so we can see more of the sink, just like that. And then I'm gonna place it correctly where I talk about pouring a glass of water under the sink. If I don't have a container of water, I can directly put my glass under the tap. Okay, so I'm just gonna click and drag this out because I don't want it to start there. I want it to start before the tap is going. Container of water, I can directly put my glass under the tap. And step three. Just like that. So that's the end of the pouring part. And then now we're just gonna do the same thing again. Copy the text element for step three right click paste oh sorry i just copied the shape then and then i'm going to copy the text right click paste click and drag it so it starts here customize the text so it says step three under the tap and step three pour the water so i take my glass and i take my bottle Okay, so there you go. As you can see now, I've added all of my text title screens and I've added my B-roll and I actually want to add some transitions to make it look a little bit more professional. So here from when we go from the camera pointing at me to the B-roll of the glass in the sink, if I click on this little transition icon at the start of the clip, I can actually select a transition for this clip to transition from. So let's say I want it to dissolve into this clip. Now I've selected dissolve. If I press play, 
If I don't have a container of water, I can directly put my glass under the tap. As you can see, transitions. Now, if you want to add this transition everywhere, what you can do is just right click on the transition and click set as default. And the transition that is currently selected there will then be set as default to all other transitions. Now we've added transitions. Something very, very useful for training videos is to have subtitles so people can clearly and easily understand what you're saying. And it also makes your video more accessible to the deaf and hard of hearing. So I'm just gonna click on the subtitle tab and click on auto subtitle select the language I'm talking in and just click on start and then this process can take anywhere between a few seconds to a few minutes depending on your internet connection and the size of your video but basically Veed is going to automatically transcribe all of the audio from your video into text and turn that text into timestamped subtitles automatically so as you can see it's just finished and now in our timeline we can actually see all of the subtitles that have appeared and if I just click on them and play it back through today I'm going to show you how to pour a glass of water step one Get your glass. So as you can see, we have some pretty accurate subtitles here. Now, the only thing I have to say about them is that I don't like the fact that they are so big and I don't like the style. So I might just change the size, first of all, reduce them just like that. And then I could change the style, but actually I think I might keep it because they are very easy to read. At the bottom here, we also have a bunch of different preset subtitles that I can choose from. However, I'm gonna stick with these ones because I feel like with the black backdrop, they are the easiest to read. If I double click a subtitle in the timeline, it then highlights it in blue in the subtitle editor. And I can just go in and change the text just like with regular text. And the beauty of the subtitles is that when I add a styling to one, as you can see, they all adopt the same style. So just like that, I've subtitled my video in seconds. And now this means that I can have a transcription alongside my video when it's being watched. And let's say you're making a training video and you're hiring overseas. Well, you don't want to have to make the training video in multiple different languages and you don't want to have to hire translators. The beauty of Veed is that you can translate your subtitles in just, again, a few clicks. Here, we're just going to click on the translate tab in the subtitles menu and then click on add new language. And let's just translate from original and then we're going to translate to, let's just say French. So I'm just going to put FR in in there for French click translate to French and then the translation is a lot faster than the auto subtitles I'm just going to take a few seconds as you can see here it's now already translated into French and if I press play today I'm going to show you how to pour a glass of water step one get your glass so now I've got my glass. As you can see, we've now translated our video into French. The last step is to export, render, and share our training video. To do this, we're just gonna click on the export button in the top right, and here we have a few different options. Now, the first thing I'm going to mention is that if you don't want your subtitles burnt into the actual video and you want them as a separate SRT file, well, we're just gonna close the export menu, head back to subtitles, and here in options, we can actually go and download our subtitles as an SRT format, a VTT or a .txt. So if I want a text transcription of my entire video, I can just go ahead, click download. As you can see, it's now downloaded to the computer. So I'm just gonna close this right here. And now back to the rendering. If I click on export, here we have a few different preset export options. I always usually stick with high definition. I'm gonna switch off my burnt in subtitles because I don't want the subtitles to be burnt into the actual MP4 file and then just click export video. As you can see, our training video is now being rendered and this can take anywhere between a few seconds to a few minutes. And while we wait, if we take a look around, this is the video view page. And on the right here, we can actually see we've got a full transcription. So the subtitles of our video and we can actually change the language to French. So if you are sharing this training video with someone who's working for you overseas, they can just go ahead and follow the exact same video as you along in French. Now, when you want to share it with them, you can just click on the share button right here and we've got a few different options. The easiest way is to just copy the link and send it to someone. We can also choose to directly share it to social media or we can actually copy the embed link and embed it directly with the video player on our website. And then if I want to, I can directly add someone's email address. And then if I need to, I can also change the privacy settings. So I can choose to not allow downloading and not allow comments, which brings me to comments. So in the right menu here, we've got the transcription. At the top, we've got a toggle where we can switch it to comments. And if we click on comments, as you can see at the bottom, I can actually leave a comment. And we're just gonna wait for the video to finish so I can show you a good example. So once your training video has is finished rendering, when you share it with a trainee and they watch it, if they don't understand a certain point, the beauty of Veed is that they can just go through and let's say they don't understand this part right here at 17 seconds. At 17 seconds, they can go and leave a comment and saying, can you please elaborate? Just like so, drop the comment 
And now, as you can see, we have a comment added at 0.18 seconds. And if I click on it, I'm taken to this specific time. And I can also see that I'm the person that left the comment. So we can see the name of the person that left the comment and the exact point on the timeline where they left the comment. And this is very useful when you're training quite a few different people and you don't want them to ask the same question over and over. And so if everyone leaves comments here asking the questions, you can reply to them directly here and then people can just read the replies just like on a forum. They're not gonna ask you over and over. Over. And eventually, if something does become irrelevant in your video and you need to change something, but you don't want to reshoot the entire video, well, the beauty of it is we can actually just go and click on edit video and then we're taken straight back into the editor with the raw files and we can just replace the section we need. If I need to change the text to update it a little bit, we can do that. If I need to add an outro, if I need to add a logo, I can do that, do the same thing over again and then just click on export just like so and re-render it. And that is how to make training videos. If you have any questions, ask away in the comments below and I will answer them as best as I can. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.